I still hear some people joining. Uh, we'll start in a few seconds. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining uh, this webinar today around uh, automated regression testing, find root causes, and business objects. This presentation and live demo uh, basically will uh, and is around finding and fixing your calculation engine changes, regressions, and business objects. Instead of doing you uh, basically the typical uh, boring presentation about company uh, basically and doing that during an hour, we'll go directly to the point of this webinar and try to keep it short um, so that we've got all your attention. Uh, just for you to know, we've got over 1 million users on uh, business objects. Our solutions will pinpoint you, your calculation engine changes, regressions, down to the result and level from XR3 to BI4.2 and works on Webby, Desky, and Crystal Wheel. Uh, 360 basically has been engineered to be used by admins and report users. The process can be automated and can be scheduled so that each time it finds regression, it pushes email and will do a lot more. Uh, typically, it's used for service pack upgrades, migrations, or each time something has changed on your platform. I'll pass it over shortly to Pauline Lancaster, uh, one of our pre-sales engineers uh, based in uh, DC. Pauline will present you a use case uh, around um, 360 bind and then after that we'll do a live demo. Uh, we'll try to keep this pretty short. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation and then we'll be happy to answer to these questions uh, at, the, at the end of this webinar. Um, I'll Sorry about that Bruno, I think I muted you. Pauline, go ahead. Yes, yes, sorry about that. I think I accidentally muted you. Um, are you ready for me to go ahead? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to just mute everybody um, just for now. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat window and we will answer them at the end. Um, so let me just mute everybody. Um, Okay. Okay. So we'll get started. Um, so uh, before you begin doing your regression testing, um, there are a few steps that, that we recommend um, and using our tools that will make it much quicker um, for you to find your regressions and then resolve them. Uh, so first you want to identify the reports that you are included in your regression testing. Um, you don't want to, you know, if you have 10,000 or 20,000 reports in your environment, it would be impossible to test all of them. So you want to narrow down either the most used reports, the um, most important reports. Um, you know, you don't want to spend your time testing reports and, and fixing, resolving issues with reports that are no longer used in your environment. Um, so we do have a tool called 360Eyes that is a BI on BI tool that will allow you to um, identify reports that have been used or that are being used or the most heavily used so that you can focus your testing on those reports. Um, we'll show you that tool. Uh, and then with 360Bind is the automated regression testing tool. Uh, that's what you would use to um, using those reports that you've identified uh, to run those reports to do the comparisons. Um, and then with 360Eyes, you can, you know, once you've identified where there might be issues, maybe it's a calculation engine change um, between the two versions, you can then use 360Eyes to determine what other reports um, might have that issue. Um, and then you can either manually fix them or you can do bulk updates um, with 360 View. So we'll start with a use case. Um, we have a uh, federal agency that has used um, that used 360Eyes and 360Bind in order to automate their regression testing. Uh, they had 12,000 documents in their environment, 730 users, 70 universes. Um, they were migrating from Business Objects XI31 Service Pack 7 to 4.2 Service Pack 2. 
So first they identified the documents that they wanted to include in their environment um, or in their testing, which was using 360Is. Um, then they ran the exports and comparisons um, with the reports that they identified. That took an hour and a half for them to export the documents, do the comparisons. So they did comparisons based on data, structure, structure style, and images. And then they um, identified what kinds of regressions they had. So um, they had, it took about an hour to identify those. There were 28 documents with regressions and 24 um, with uh, regret with regressions with just data and image issues. And then there were, when they only um, looked at regressions with just data, they only had 17 documents with regressions. So they were actually able to analyze the root cause of those 17 um, data regressions. It only took them about an hour. Um, there was a variable that was using a round function um, along with a format number function. Um, it worked fine in XI R3, um, but it no longer worked in BI4 due to a calculation engine change. Sorry, I jumped. Okay, so then they were able to run impact analysis to determine what other reports in their environment had that issue. So, um, you know, they, they found that there were 596 documents that were impacted by that, that format, um, that particular variable format number round. Um, so they were able to identify the ones that were actually used, so that narrowed it down to only 260 documents that needed to be fixed. Um, and then with 360 view, they were able to do, to do uh, a bulk update um, on that environment. So I'm going to first jump into 360Is and show you how you can start um, planning your regression testing. Okay. Oops. Okay, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, so I'm going to log into Launchpad. Uh, this is where 360Is is installed. So uh, 360Is is the BI on BI tool. This requires a database. Um, in order to um, install it, you specify where your database is, and then you import a buyer file, which contains uh, jobs. So these are programs written in the SDK, and um, they are um, imported, so you run those. They take a snapshot of your environment at a port in, at a point in time, and then they're also in, included in the buyer file are reports. So once you've run the jobs, then you have reports, pre-canned webby reports, available to you to report off of of the information in the eyes database, um, and there are universes available as well. So the first step in starting a um, regression testing um, effort is to determine which reports you're going to include in your testing. Um, so the report that we recommend and this particular customer used was last document used. So um, with auditing, you get information about um, only documents that have been used, but you also want information about documents that haven't been used. Um, this report will list all the content of your environment, so every report in your repository, and it'll um, tell you whether it's been used or not. So uh, what, what the customer did was focus on the reports that are being used. Either they, they're aware of the more um, you know, high profile reports or they used this report to see you know, which reports had the most action counts. So if you've got reports with hundreds of action counts, those are more uh, frequently used. So they narrowed down um, which ones they were gonna use. That was the first step. Once they've narrowed that down, then they could do the regression testing. Uh, so they would come to the 360 tool. So this is a web application. Um, this is installed on a Tomcat server alongside um, any web application server that you have. Um, you log in with your business objects credentials. And then you schedule your, um, Okay, so you go to Schedule and Schedule Bind.
and then you would create your bind task. So this is where you select the documents that you want to include in your scheduling. Um, I would give it a task title. So this is going to be my, um, so this particular customer was comparing 3.1 to 4.1. Um, so these are my 3.1 marketing reports. Um, you can group your reports however you want. You can run them all together. Um, so then you would select the reports you want to include in the testing. So just um, I'm just going to show an example of how these are selected. Okay, and then from there, once you've selected your reports, uh, you would select a category um, for those reports. This is not a business objects category. This is just a category where you've a way to group your reports. Um, the format we export the results to is XML if you're doing webby reports. And then you would set the prompts for those reports. So you go through each of the reports that you have um, and set the prompts and schedule those reports to run. So those reports run and generate the results. Um, and then you would also do that same job, schedule those same reports in your 4.1 environment. Um, we do have an option where you can export that particular job you created so that you don't have to go through and, and uh, recreate the scheduled jobs and select all your prompts. Um, so once you've done that, you have export of your 3.1 results and the export of your 4.1 results, and now you can do the comparison. So that is done um, in the web application as well. You can schedule it or you can do it live on the screen. So I'll show you how we do the analysis uh, live. So I would click New Analysis. And then I would select the category that I specified when I created those scheduled jobs. This is my marketing exports. The file type is XML. Um, comparison kind, that would be the last two exports I ran. Uh, you can specify the report's binding, so whether they are the same, have the same CUID or it's by name or there's a custom binding. And then you have all these options for what you want to compare. So you can compare data, structure, style, you can compare images, so that if you have um, charts or logos on your reports, I'll select the, the level that I want to compare. Uh, there's an option for similitude binding, that's if you're comparing Desky to Webby, and then you also have the option to compare execution time, so if it's important to you to, you know, that there are similar times, you can select that. I'll submit this comparison. And now it's going to go out to the folder where the results are and do the comparison and where if, if there are any, any differences, it will highlight those. So here I get a summary. There are 10 matching documents and three non-matching documents. And if I scroll down, all of these red, or sorry, all the green dots indicate all of the documents that are matching and then the red dots indicate the non-matching documents. I'll select the first one. And here I get a view. This is the uh, analytical view. Um, anywhere there's red, it shows that there are differences. I'm going to toggle to the report view. And I will expand that. So on the left-hand side, those are my results from 3.1. The right-hand side are 4.1. Um, and then I can scroll through the reports. And anywhere I see differences, they will be immediately um, highlighted in red, so I immediately know where the data are different. Okay, that's the first report. I'll select the next report. And here, um, again, on the left-hand side is my 3.1 results. Right-hand side is 4.1. And again, I can scroll through and I immediately see uh, there are a few cells that have some differences. Um, and then I can further look into that. Maybe it's a universe object. Maybe there's um, some particular syntax. There's a calculation engine change that made a difference. Um, I have multiple tabs in this particular report. Uh, I can select the second tab of the report. And again, I can scroll through and look at that report uh, as well to see where there are differences. And the last report I'll show, this one contains graphs. Um, so this is where I had it selected to compare images. This is where this would be um, compared, and it immediately will show you, um, highlighted in red, where there are differences on this graph. Um, so you can imagine if you were doing this on your own, uh, you know, if looking at the reports, after a while everything kind of looks the same and you don't notice where there are differences. So this 
tool immediately highlights where there are differences and then you can further look into um, what, what might be causing those differences. So that is... Um, yes? Yes, it's possible uh, to uh, select the report uh, by folder and stand by categories or, or only by categories we choose the report to analyze. So is it possible to schedule a report by folder? Is that what you said? Yes. 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 Yeah. So when you schedule, when you select a report, I had the option for documents or I could select folders as well. Um, yeah. So you could select an entire okay. folder. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Sorry, I guess I... So I was going to jump back to the slides. Uh, maybe not. Sorry. Okay. Um, so jumping back to the slide, so we've done so we've done step one. We have identified the reports with 360 eyes that we're going to include in the testing. Um, Step two is running the regression test. So we've run the regression test and, and analyzed the regressions. Um, so in this particular example, the, um, the customer, the, the use case that we were looking at, the customer found this particular, this format number um, function was not working that was, they were using in variables. Um, so the next step is to, uh, to determine where else the report. So they've selected the reports that um, they were going to include in the testing, and those reports they found issues, but there may be other reports in their environment that had those same issues now that they've figured out, um, you know, what, what regressions they have with their reports. Um, so they would go back to 360Is and run an impact analysis on all their reports to determine if there were any additional ones. So I'll show you a quick report that will give you that information. So if I go to impact analysis, um, I have a number of different options. I can look at universe objects that might have an issue. Um, in this case, it was a variable. Um, so if I take a look at this report, um, I could filter this, this uh, report based on um, a variable name. I could look at the syntax of a variable. Uh, my report right now is filtered by a variable name. Um, so let me select, I'll say the fixed date uh, variable was causing issues. Um, I filter on that, I get a list of all of the reports that contain that variable. Um, so this is a two date variable. Um, you could also filter on the variable value. So if there was a, you know, the um, a different a spe specific function that wasn't working. So you could identify all the reports that have that, those issues. You can then go back to bind, schedule the same tests. And, um, you know, once you've fixed everything um, and then validate that you've uh, corrected um, corrected the reports or corrected the, the variables um, so that you don't no longer have that issue. Uh, we also have the ability um, with another tool, 360 View, um, if I go to the Objects tab, we can actually do bulk updates on report variables. So um, there's this Update Webby Variables option. So if I know that a particular syntax needs to be changed, I can um, do a bulk update on all the reports in my environment um, based on either, so I've got different options um, based on a variable name or a formula. It'll filter out all of um, all of those values, I can export that to Excel, and then um, I can um, update the Excel spreadsheet and then load it back into 360 view, and it'll do bulk, bulk updates for me. Um, so that is that is how the that is how the tool works and how the process that our customers have been successful with using when they've been doing when they do migrations, whether you're um, just doing daily maintenance as far as um, uh, just modifying a universe. Uh, if you're making changes to your, um, you know, database changes can often um, cause changes in the results of your reports. Um, so anytime you make a change to your environment, you do have the uh, potential for impacting um, your reports. So I do, let's see, I have a couple questions. Um, 
So someone asked if both reports are the same, except one report is positioned um, as second record. Will the impact rest of the rows in comparison? Will that impact? Um, I see. So if both reports are the same, so I guess they're saying maybe one record is different than, I'm not sure if I under, understand this um, particular um, question. Someone had a question about, um, I might have to get back, get back with you specifically because I'm not, um, not sure um, what what your question was, but I can follow up uh, with you separately. Um, I have everyone, everyone muted. And then there was another question that said, is there any report that shows um, the SI template CUID? Um, I'm not sure what that means either. Um, Okay, somebody asked if, um, okay, let me, if action counts on the report is uh, su successfully refreshed or it's configurable. Um, so action counts, I, I'll go back to uh, 360i's to show you that, um, so there was a report that we were looking at um, that had user activity, um, last document used, and there was, there's an action count um, so this actually takes all action types. So whether it's modify, create, view, refresh, and it, and it generates a count for that. And these reports can all be uh, filtered or configured differently if, if you're only interested in certain, you know, maybe you only want to see view or refresh, um, the report can be modified. Um, if you, when you have 360i's, you have access to the universes. There's really good documentation on those universes. So you have the ability to create your own reports as well or modify the existing existing reports. Okay, um, someone's asking me if both reports contain the same data except one record positioned at row number two, will this impact the rest of the records? Um, yeah, well, yeah, that, so it does a side-by-side -side comparison, so yes, it would then um, show that the rest, the remaining records are not correct either. Um, So, um, okay, let me move on to the next slide because so, we're getting some questions about uh, what tools are available. So this, um, these are all the tools in the 360 suite. Um, 360 Bind is one of the tools um, in the suite, so it is, it is separate. Um, so each of these tools you can have all or, um, you know, one or two of them. Um, so 360 View, uh, 360 Plus, 360 Bind, and Cast are all separate, and 360i is all separate tools, and um, they can be, you know, you can purchase whichever ones you you want. Um, and basically, uh, regarding the presentation of today, um, if you want to get some keys, we're more than happy to provide you some keys uh, for 30 days, and you can try uh, 360 Bind or 360Is or any of our tools <coughs> free and uh, full version during 30 days. So uh, just shoot us an email, and uh, we'll be more than happy to, uh, to provide you some keys and uh, if need to help you to install. Um, I think that was all, Pauline. I'd, uh, yeah, anyway. there's. I have a couple more questions. So yes. someone asked if this was going to be recorded, and this was recorded, and it will be sent out to everyone that was um, that joined the call today, um, or that registered. And I have one more question: um, Can I compare Excel data as um, against BO report in Bind? Um, um, so we typically, so with, with Webby reports, um, I guess exporting, when the export format is XML. Um, that's the best way to compare Webby reports. If you're comparing Crystal reports, uh, the best format is Excel. Um, but you wouldn't, you don't specify, um, you know, what, that you couldn't just take like an Excel file and compare it. So this is for BO reports that you scheduled um, and then you format it to um, either be exported in Excel or XML, depending on the report type. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, 
the next question is that um, you able to you're able to identify. So you see that you can identify uh, formula differences um, that are causing data differences, but are you able to identify universe code differences? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by universe code. So if the uh, the SQL in the universe objects um, is that what you mean by universe code? So code in the objects, yeah. So if the if um, if something's changed between the objects within the universes, um, you know whether the the SQL or um, whatever uh, filters are in that particular object, um, it would uh, be reflected. Um, I think that's what you mean by code, the, the, the select statement behind the object. Um, okay, so yes, that would, that would you know, if the, there were differences um, or if, you know, if you, between the different releases, um, business objects handles those differently. Sometimes syntaxes get, um, uh, they no longer work. You have to change the syntax. Uh, you update a, a database um, version. Those sometimes also um require syntax updates. So um, that would cause the uh, objects um, to report different data. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a, little, a few more questions. Um, let me see. Okay, so um, someone's asking, Three hundred and sixty show any chart info about the performance of the BO server and its services um, in runtime, different clusters. Okay, so um, uh, someone asked if you could do regression te tests based on BW data sources. Um, yes, those you could do those as well as long as they're you know, reports, Webby or Crystal reports, any Webby or Crystal reports, um, you can be, you can do regression tests on. Um, sorry, back to the chart info about the performance of the BO server. Um, the 360 bind doesn't have any performances. We do have a new monitoring tool that will monitor the um, the BO server and all the processes. Um, and you can have alerts and, um, and manage uh, kind of watchers on on those uh, processes to determine you know if there's something if Mac, you know it's maxing out in CPU you can specify certain thresholds um, for memory and CPU utilization so that you get alerted um, but bind will only tell you if a report if you know one report uh, um, has taken longer in one environment than the other it'll give you that information. Uh, Pauline, would you mind uh, typing in the chat box your email address if uh, there are some other questions that people have and they can always uh, uh, send you an email after. Okay. And anyway, uh, the link to this uh, session will be sent to all the people who have joined uh, today, so uh, they'll have also your email address inside. Do we have some other questions, uh, Pauline? No, I think that was. I think that was it. Okay, well, uh, that was all. I hope uh, that was uh, interesting for all the people who joined, and uh, uh, please feel free to ask for some keys, and we'll be more than happy to uh, get back to you uh, and provide you some keys during 30 days. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.